everyone, Jack and Sam here again uh, from Cultaholic.com. This time in the Koishikara at Kurikan Gardens. Yes. A stone's throw from the Tokyo it's just Dome. just over there. Where tomorrow it's all going to be kicking off. Um, it is, yeah. But we're here to do some pitches. Usually it's nine pitches, but because there's only two of us, we're going to be doing six pitches for Wrestle Kingdom 13. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be surreal. I can't wait. The dome is huge as well. Mm, we so walked around big. it just before. There was an all Japan bus parked out, like, out back there. That was odd. Disgusting. Don't you know what that stay is. in their territory. <laughs> <laughs> no, the I'm territory of Tokyo. They must be running a show at some point. Yeah, because um, Tubman pointed out that not only is the Tokyo Dome nearby, but Kurikan Hall as well. Oh, that nice. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So maybe they're doing something there. But yes, let's crack on and have a look at our six pitches for Wrestle Kingdom 30. So I'm going to start things off, and I'm going to go with Jay White to defeat Kazuchika Okada. Right. But okay. Not in a traditional sense. I know that it would be good for him if he beat him clean or whatever, or if I was after yeah. a massive effort. I think it's, it should be as un-Japanese as possible. It should be so Western, so just disgraceful. Yeah. Run-ins, beating down Okada, Gato gets involved. Well, this is, yeah, it, it's what I've want. It's what I've been wanting for a while is the Bullet Club to return to being um, just horrible gaijin heels. Proper again. heels. Yeah, like yeah. just coming in and, and, and not playing by the rules, uh, going against New Japan's policies and going against all that and not caring. Even if they pick up a loss, not caring, just... Their entire goal is to just destroy New yeah. Japan. I love that. Yeah. So I think it, in my in my head, really, I'm thinking like it would probably be best for Jay White. What was that? Some ducks landing. Excellent. Um, I'm thinking <laughs> in my head it's probably best for um, for Jay White to beat him clean, or for yeah. Okada to beat him in a hard fought battle and have like a respectful thing. But the feud I needs think, some I wrongness, think a distraction to a like a referee like Red Shoes. Okay. Who should know better? Right. And then that might make it a bit better. So, like, if he wins and it looks like he's won clean to the referee, but if it's if it's via very devious means that he's managed to pull a win, like whether it's a like a ref bump and a weapon shot, or yeah. whether the rest of Bullet Club get involved, but I think as well the the really important part of this is that no matter what happens, regardless almost of who wins the match, there needs to be a horrible beatdown on Okada afterwards. Oh God, absolutely. To set up a new yeah. thing. Yes. Think, Okada needs to get his mojo back as well. Yeah, he does. I think this is going to be the year. There's of only Okada one way again. for that to happen as well, and that's to bring in his new tag team partner, Mr. Mojo himself, Rawley. Yes, get him in. Imagine. We don't just stay hyped. <laughs> we make it we rain. We make it rain. Sam, hyped. what's your first pitch um, for Wrestle Kingdom 30? So my first pitch is a pretty. It, well, it's up for debate really because nobody really knows whether like what the plan's going to be for him. But I firmly believe Jericho is going to lose the IC belt. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that means New Japan's going to stop working with him. I think that he should continue because he's been great. He's, he's just been so entertaining, such a good heel. Uh, I think we're going to see, uh, if not at the Dome, then after his match or the next day, um, we will see his next feud set up. I'd like it to be at the Dome. Yeah. Um, and I'd like it to be, you know, move on from LIJ because they've had a hard year. Just, <laughs> I just, just want them to carry on being cool. But... I think Jericho's sort of disrupted Lij for long enough for me. Right. So I don't know if you've got any ideas about how you could. Feud I was going to say, who do you think would feud with him next? Yeah, because um, I don't think he'd ever join the Bullet Club. No, uh, he's not really the type of guy where he'd work in a stable unless he was the leader. He's kind of his own entity. Yeah, yeah. he's his own thing, and he'll he'll do whatever he wants. Maybe you get him into Gucci Japan. I reckon <laughs> Ishii would be a good one. That'd be great. Yeah, like a really hard hitter great. versus like a more technical hard hitter, but also like. Just in terms of Ishii is like stoic and everything that is stoic. Stoic. Yeah. stoic, 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 stoic. <sighs> it's been a long time. And um, <laughs> uh, he's like stoic and and tough and like kind of silent. He's not that you know outspoken yeah. against uh, Jericho. Who's like the antithesis of all that. Oh god, it's yeah. an antithesis properly. So that's fine. <laughs> Just smaller say stoic. words like stoic. <laughs> yeah. So I, I reckon Ishii might be a good shout for yeah. that. Um, I'm just trying to think because. I'd love to see him and Osprey tangle up over the Never Belt. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that'd yeah. be great. I think yeah. it'd elevate both of them because Osprey is wanting to go up to heavyweight. Jericho can put on a good match with anybody. Um, oh, bong 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 bong. Oh. <laughs> so where were we again? Um, we were just interrupted by the lovely lady. We were just coming to the end of your first point. Yes. And you mentioned Osprey and Jericho. Yeah, so that thing. was it. I, yeah, Osprey's wanting to be taken seriously as a as a heavyweight contender. I think Jericho can have a good match with anybody as I said yeah. uh, Osprey can have a great match with anybody as I said um, and just the thought of them two working together ah oh, yeah, I think I think, it, I think it'd be great I think even if it was just like a maybe a two or three match feud because that's what Jericho is good at is is elevating 
elevating people. I yeah. mean, not that Osprey needs elevating, but I think just the the gravitas that a feud with Jericho would have for Osprey. Yeah, but you mentioned for the never open weight belt. Yeah, this might bring us on to my next point, my next okay. pitch, which is that Osprey should lose. Which I did say in the predictions. Oh. I did say that in the predictions, but I'm going to justify why I think Shameful. he should lose against Kota Ibushi. Not not why I think he should. Yeah. No, not why I think he will. Why I think he should. Why you think he should? Why I think it wouldn't be too bad for him to lose, right? Yeah. So New Japan, as we've seen with Rapongi 3K and with Jay White, arguably at the minute, they don't like to just push people straight away. Like they'll give them a big push, but they won't have them steamroll everyone. Yeah. They'll encounter some problems. They'll lose. They have to. Well, the Young Bucks did it, didn't they, with the heavyweight tag belts? Yeah, they had that yeah, little yeah. story where it was. So. I think that the, they should do the same thing with Osprey. I think the fact that he's moving from the junior division, it appears to be moving to the heavyweight division, yeah. that's huge for New Japan. That oh, doesn't God, happen yeah, very yeah. often. And I think that they won't, or they shouldn't, make it look too easy. So I think, even though Ibushi's not the biggest... Should go, be, yeah, maybe a shock you know, to the guy, system for him. Maybe, I think it should be close, and I think it should come very close to beating him, but I think that ultimately Ibushi should win. I agree with your point in the predictions video, though, that Ibushi, if he lost, would then be free of the never belt, and he could... Do his own thing. Not, yeah, I mean, maybe I, we pushed I, the towards way I sounded like when I said that was the the never belts are sort of curse. No, no, I know what you I meant. Think, yeah, but I think it it often can be seen as a bit of a curse that belt because it yeah. never really gets any prominence. It never really, um, and I think somebody like Osprey could elevate that. Yeah, um, and with Abushi free to go into like a heavyweight run, that's that was my sort of thinking, but. I'm starting to lean toward your thinking, and I'm quite scared. <laughs> well, for the predictions contest, yeah. I just think that Ibushi as well is, you know, he's one half of the Golden Lovers, and because yeah. Omega is looking so strong at the minute, Ibushi sort of needs to look strong as well. Mm-hmm. But then he, he did look very strong in the G1, so it wouldn't exactly be a big blow to him if he everybody, lost. Osprey. Yeah, everybody knows that he's already really strong. I think it should. Be, I think it should be. I think it should be that Ibushi should win, but I'm not too confident in that prediction. I think it's really yeah. fifty-fifty. But um, that's mine. That Ibushi should. Knock Osprey down a peg or two. Wow. Yes, he might be wrestler of the year for me, but... <laughs> but I love so this. What? <laughs> he's my wrestler of the year and he's going to lose. He shouldn't win and he's not going to either. <laughs> um, what is your second pitch? So, uh, my second pitch is that there is trouble a brewing in chaos and the more I've thought about it, maybe chaos might implode tomorrow at the door. Oh, just the end because, of it. Because... Like, or at least there'll be a major, major set of ructions because we've already obviously had um, Okada and Gado and Jado uh, splitting and that exploding, and that yeah. was one big blow to chaos. Um, and then what if Chucky e. T turns? So if if there's a, if there's more ructions within uh, chaos, then could we see it implode? And the thing is, like, as well, if it happens at the Dome, that means whatever happens the day after is going to be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that would set up something great for New Year Dash. Yeah. Um, so I think it could feasibly happen. Maybe post-match, maybe they lose, and that's it, Chucky T snaps. Or maybe Chucky T costs Oh, so you think in that match? The match, yeah, maybe it'll happen I think this happen could then. happen at, at, after various matches, you yeah. could see this be a potential thing. Maybe after Okada's, if he does lose to Jay White... Oh yeah, they could come down and like try and help him out, and, yeah. then, and then he could turn. Or maybe, maybe after Ishii's, because yeah. he's obviously part of Chaos as well. Yes. Oh, who it's... do you think would? Who do you think would like? Do you think they'd all just like fall out? Or do you think it'd be like factions? I think it would Not just. Too many, obviously, but... I think it would just be like a major, major shock. Um, but and the, but then it leaves like I don't know if it would implode to the point where it it completely divides and disappears forever. But I think that could be like a major blow. With somebody leaving or a beat uh, down on chaos, leaving them looking very weak. You could say Okada, unless Yoshi Hashi comes through and <laughs> saves the day. Oh, he's not the my card. little hamster man. Okada he's got to be. Okada could well leave because he's been tagging with Tanahashi recently rather than his own chaos stablemate. Yeah, but then who who's going to lead chaos unless you have a new Ishii, leader of chaos? Mate, Ishii all day. But then no, because you could you could bring somebody new in Go and have a younger oh, right. leader of chaos against a younger leader of Bullet Club. Mm. Completely refresh the the leadership. Yeah, I just can't think of any candidates at the minute. But yes, yeah. I do like it. I do. Yeah. What about you? What's your uh... second, third, third, pitch. third pitch? Yes, my third pitch is as people get closer, I'm scared they're going to complain. <laughs> um, my third pitch is that. Um, oh, what was it? Oh, yes, I think, and and I don't think this is likely to happen. But if it did, it would be a shock to the system. In the words of shock the undisputed the system. system. I think the Cody and the Young Bucks should win their matches leave with the belts mm. and go off to All Elite Wrestling and we've got that classic storyline, the CM Punk-esque, mm. the summer of Elite 
the spring of elite the spring of yeah, elite that's the all spring of elite everyone thinks and i've also predicted it so of you that that cody and the bucks are going to lose their respective matches yes not you know win any gold at wrestle kingdom and that'll leave them free to start all in all elite wrestling all yeah. in wrestling um excuse me but if they did win that would be crazy everyone would be like what's going on it yeah, would open it, up the wrestling it's, world it's the type of thing that i can actually see happening really? because yeah because it's such a juicy story yeah it's so shocking especially if they make this big deal like tomorrow at the dome about AEW if they come out wearing all yeah, elite shirts yeah. if they if they spin all that and you've already you're going to launch with an interbrand feud um then what happens there also though the problem is i thought mm. this when i was thinking of this pitch when the first one happens, yeah. how does the second one still be a big shock? So, say, like, say the Bucks win. The like, second Whoa. one would have to be a super, super well fought match yeah. with a shock ending. I and think. then I think the, the or maybe a dirty ending. Or maybe like a dusty finish. But like if if say the Bucks win and then Cody wins, then the Bucks need to come out with Cody and celebrate, yeah. ham it up, and be like, "See you later, we're off." And if they left through the crowd like Punk, that would just be the best. <laughs> and we can high five them. Harold make them out just doing this. They take us out drinking, yeah. <laughs> no, they lead us away. Like, yeah. come on, cult Holly. That's the one. I'm so scared for the Bullet Club party. It's tonight. It um, is, yeah. Gonna, but those know. guys aren't members of Bullet Club anymore. They're the Bullet Club OG. Oh, these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but we're friends with both. Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I don't think we should say that with Tom. Tom and Tom might see this. He's probably going to murder us. I'm so scared that it's a trap. Sam, sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, it's really interesting what you were saying about your third point because my idea for the third one is that with all this fanfare around all elite wrestling um and the elite in general yeah um what happens if a single member and perhaps the most important member of that faction is ousted what well, kenny omega yeah oh so what happens if what chase owens no <laughs> not chase um what happens if every single member that's part of the elite loses except for Omega. Yeah. What does that mean for all elite wrestling? Does, does he, do they run a story with him like no longer being part of the elite? Do they, uh, resent him for staying with new Japan? Does it lead to this huge shocking debut for AEW? Does Mm. like, I don't know how it's going to factor because like, obviously we were listening to the wrestling as over radio. Dave doesn't know who has and hasn't signed. Like he had a a couple of names, obviously. We had it on last night in our hotel room. It was a big party. (laughs) Yeah. We're listening to Dave. We put the phone in a cup. So it sounded louder because we forgot the speaker, (laughs) but I, uh, I'd be interested to see if there'd be an awkward standoff at the end. Right. If Kenny's got the belt, yeah. they come down to celebrate with him. Could they turn on him? All I want, all I want is for yeah. the night not to go. Or maybe off. they throw him an, an AEW oh, and he's like, shirt oh, and he's like, what do yeah. I do with it? He's looking at Harold May in one corner. Yeah. <laughs> um, all I <laughs> just, want. Just the young bucks in the other. <laughs> and I know you've predicted for him to win, but all I want for yes. this show not to end with Hiroshi Tanahashi playing the air guitar. <laughs> To send us all home. I think happy. even if he don't want even it. if he gets to play the air guitar a little bit, he's probably going to get beaten down. I um, just, I, can't, I don't get it. I but, don't get it. Yeah, I know it's fun and babyface, but it's air guitar. Yeah, and he'd have to give a big speech afterwards as well. Remember though, because it's the main event of Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I just don't know. I think there's something there maybe with a storyline for omega still having a new japan belt and everybody else Not, moving forward yeah. into a new company yeah he's still have a bushy though in theory i mean i imagine the the talent's going to still probably work with new japan I to a so. degree um it would make sense um, uh, jordan grace just signed i saw that i just checked my phone as we were walking towards here oh, that's i great. think she signed for i, thought, wrestling, I yeah. thought she was going to be the big shock name that Meltzer was going on about who was he said there's a major independent name uh, and she's been doing so well on the indie scene, but everybody yeah. was like, "Is it this guy? Is it that guy?" It doesn't have to be a guy. No, like, and she really impressed it all in. She's solid. Talent. I don't know if she's a shock though. But if there was a shock one, I think that might still be coming. Yeah, but I, I, st- I just couldn't fathom who it, who else it could have been. Also, really. bit of, just turn this yeah. into a news video just at yeah. the end. Oh. Um, also, it's not big news, but uh, Drake Maverick's been doing some cheeky tweets on Twitter. Has he? Trevor Lee and DJ Z's yeah impact contracts are up, and uh, he's been tweeting with like the hmm emoji. Oh, what do you think be... of that, Richard? Yeah, Richard. Amazing. Richard yeah, said amazing, sorry. yeah. Sorry about deviating uh, there towards 2 There's also a bit of sad news as well today while we're still of on course, the news. Yeah. Uh, mean Gene Oakland has passed away. Yeah, that was sad um, to wake up to. Yeah, it was, it was horrible, that. I know. Like, voice of my, well, one of the voices of my childhood. When I first started watching wrestling with my dad when I was little, it was all WCW. Uh, mean right. Gene was the guy. 
Um, we walked past him at WrestleCon once. Yes. It was bewildering because his real voice was just his voice yeah. from telly. But he looked so, like he had loads of time for everyone. Oh, yeah, really he was, nice seemed guy. like the nicest guy. We didn't meet him, but he seemed yeah. like a nice guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's just a, a proper icon, like Bobby Heenan. His commentary he's, with yeah. Heenan at the Gimmick Battle Royal. That's so funny, yeah. yeah. But just, he's been there for... I mean, I know Hulk Hogan's a controversial figure, but one of his tweets really sort of resonated. He was like, yeah. me and Jim would always say, what, what do you want... I would always ask him before an interview, what do you want to do? And no... Gene would ask Hogan, what do you want to do? And Hogan yeah. would say, I'll just follow you. And he said, and it worked for like two decades or something like that. It's, it's true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, RIP to Gene Oakland. Yes. Like side story. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's our pitches video. Yes. For Wrestle Kingdom 13 in this lovely scenic park. Yeah. Just it's tucked away here. behind the Tokyo Dome. Oh. We'll be back tomorrow, of course, for Tokyo Dome itself. Um, we'll Tokyo be shoot- Dome itself. <laughs> <laughs> we're Wrestle back Kingdom for Wrestle itself. Kingdom itself at Stoic. the Tokyo Dome <laughs> Stoic. Um, and we'll be shooting some videos hopefully near the Tokyo Dome in terms of for like what happened well, there's, there's the Tokyo sort of Dome thing. City which hopefully we're going to show you guys some of we walked through it yes. before it's like there's this uh, there's a Ferris wheel with no middle which is yeah. crazy there's a roller coaster that goes through the Ferris wheel and yeah. like two buildings which it looks mental um it looks fast as well. You need like a good roller coaster. pack or two for that on Roller yeah. Coaster Tycoon. <laughs> uh, and yeah, like we're going to still be doing a vlog every day. So yeah. we have the Bullet Club party later. And I think I think Richard Tubman, when he woke up this morning, uttered two words. And that was, oh, three words, sorry, convey about sushi. So Ooh. that could be what we're doing. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Lovely stuff. Well, thanks for watching this video. Yes. You can follow all of our shenanigans in Japan at Jack the Jobber, at Lester Find, and at Cultaholic, and at Dick Tubbs, and at Dick Tubbs, at Dick Tubbs, at Dick Tubbs. <laughs> um, and don't forget, of course, to hit subscribe if you haven't, and to and jiggity, join jiggity, us. jiggity join us, jiggity join us in Japan. <laughs> <laughs>